Hey, it's the holiday season and it's time for you to start promoting your product with video. I don't know if you've heard the latest stats, but 82% of all viewed online content is going to be video in 2019. And if you want to make video that absolutely makes sales for your company during the holiday season, then you've got to stay tuned for this show. Stay tuned, folks. It's the Business of Video podcast. I'm Owen Video, and I help amazing companies create videos that create customers with video sales funnels. And if you want to grow your business with video, subscribe to my channel right now. Let's get started with today's video. Ross Seilers logging in on YouTube is saying, nice jacket. Way to jump in early with the kudos of my man, Air 5. Welcome back, everybody. It's the Business of Video podcast. I'm Owen Video here, as always, with my faithful sidekick, my comrade of comrades, Nick Effin Nimmin. Nick, how are you today, my man? I'm doing effing great, Owen. I don't know how you're doing, but I'm doing effing great. I'll tell you that right now. I'm I love one thing that I want to say. Is that I'm I'm loving I where wherever I can get one of those jackets. Yeah, you have to let me know because that is the dopest Christmas jacket I've ever seen in my entire life. Thanks, man. To put that on record. Thank you. I was going for fresh. I wanted a fresh jacket, but then when I got when I saw this, I'm like, this is a dope jacket, and I yes. made I made the decision to cross over uh, into uh, into that into that territory. But thank you. You know, I tell you, I'm not this kind of guy to wear these bright, flashy sort of things right but I, I i get i that's where looking like a model really comes into play because you can it, uh, wear anything you want and it's still gonna look awesome it's right? true it's it enter the Clooney scale right it comes back yeah. in i've got some pectoral things i have to work on but other than that yeah, i other than that i feel i feel pretty confident you know i get i get really giddy during the holiday season i want to ask you guys watching us on facebook and youtube do you get giddy during the holiday, during like the Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah season, right? Do you guys feel a little extra giddy? I know that I do. I saw this. I was heading out to Big Bear. We did some some mountaining, some cabining this last weekend, and I saw this in the store. And I go, you know what? What is a trip to Big Bear if I can't wear this, you know, around the fireplace? And so I thought I would I would bring it to the show and bring that holiday cheer to uh, to uh, our friends out there. Yeah, that's good because you know what? I also think that Christmas is an awesome time of the year. It doesn't necessarily make me giddy, but man, it makes me feel good. I love, even over here um, in Thailand, like I love going to the mall and they still yeah. have Christmas music and all that stuff playing. Yeah. And just seeing like when they when they put out like their Christmas trees and all that stuff, it just gives me that like, ah, uh, I love this time of year, even <laughs> though it's hot outside. I yeah. love this time of year. It's warm yeah, and fuzzy. It's warm and fuzzy. I'm so glad to hear you say it. You know what? I think because it, it, like, it's, it, sometimes, Nick, your talents are so superhuman that I, I wonder about your origins, right? I wonder, like, did yeah. this guy come from the planet Krypton? But when he tells me things like the holiday is my favorite time of year, it's like, I know Nick. I know Nick is, after all a human and that's that's exciting and you know i love christmas music i do i'm a big like i grew up on the neil diamond christmas album in fact what a christmas album did your family grow up on i'd love to hear uh in the comment section uh i i love the neil diamond christmas album but you listen to it once or twice <clears throat> right and it's kind of like oh my gosh how you know how much more of this can we do? And you start looking at Mannheim Steamroller. You start looking at like the the Pentatonics and all this. All happy, cheerful stuff. But what I really want is like a Snoop Dogg Christmas. What I really want is like an Eminem holiday album. You know what I mean? That would, I want be, that would be fantastic. Here, kids, gather around <laughs> and let's talk about all the different ways that we can harm Santa Claus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember an old radio show back in the day. They would do these mock Christmas albums every every year in L.A. And one was like Snoop Dogg. It was Christmas time in the LBC. Uh, and it was kind of about like, you know, popping poppin caps, you know, uh, down uh, up and down uh, 2nd Street in Long Beach. But that, I digress. I just I love Christmas music and I love being here today, guys. We're going to be looking at. 
uh, some video ads that we've seen inside the Instagram and Facebook news feed that have been successful. We're going to look at one simple video that sold me a gimbal. I literally bought the gimbal about five seconds after I saw the ad. And I nice. bought the gimbal not because I was like, oh, I'm on vacation and I want to spend money, but because the video ad, it was short, it was simple. It was so stupid simple, guys. Anybody could do this. It showed me all the products, all the features that I wanted this product to have, right? And I thought, uh, is one in particular, I'll show you when we get to it. I'm like, I need that gimbal for that reason right there. And then when I saw the price, it was like, what? And I went ahead and got it. The second video is a little bit more professionally produced. Uh, we're going to play the video. Nick and I are going to talk about it. We're going to show you some of like the conventions that the video used so that you can walk away from this episode today and go make your own video for the Facebook news feed, for the Instagram news feed. Start driving traffic, setting more appointments, and closing more sales this holiday season. That sound like a good a good show for you guys. What do you think? Sounds like a great show to me, Owen. I love it. I love that you're on board, Nick. I love that you're pumping me up. I want to say hi uh, to those of uh, our some of our friends hanging out in the Facebook and YouTube chat. I want to remind you guys that you can type five in the comment section if you want to subscribe to the show. We are live every single Wednesday at 9 a.m. And we have a lot of new stuff coming up next year. Do we not, Nick? Absolutely, we do. Tons. We've got, yeah, coming. we've got some new yeah. artwork. We've got some new, we're going to be kind of like relaunching the show in some new ways. So I'm really stoked that you guys are here. Glad that you could join us. Want to invite you. Scott Aris is logging in. Pff, great to see you, Scott Ayers. I uh, want to invite you guys to share this video on your timeline or tag your favorite business owner. Want to give a big shout out to Devante Goins logging in, Dan Norton and Steve Damala, also known as the Three Amigos. Dan Norton is saying his notepad is out. I'm glad, my man. My notepad is out, too. Good. Anna is saying, nifty jacket. I just get I get giddy watching you and Nick. I love it. I love it. That's good. That's what, that's what we we're like for, it when people get giddy. That's what we're shooting for. We're shooting for it. Curtis Brooks saying hello. Pff, hey, great to see you, Curtis Brooks. Armand is saying that the songs for his Christmas – is Petite Papa Noel from Tino Rossi. You know, I love I loved that. That's, I think, Italian. Uh, never heard of it myself. Don't, no idea. But I love that. Like, this this global, right? This global influence of Christmas. I'm used to the pentatonics and stuff. He's talking about opera singers. I love it. I love it. Anna D'Onofrio saying, as a kid, the classics were constantly being uh, played. White Christmas with Bing Crosby. Uh, yeah. Do you, are you familiar? Do you ever watch White Christmas with Bing Crosby? Um, I watch it. No, but, um, but the, like, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Like, yeah, I yeah, love yeah. that. That's... I love the actual song. Yeah. You have an excellent voice, Nick. That was really nice. Yeah, I do. I don't. Um, but, but yeah, but thanks for saying so. I, it sounded nice to me. Look, I grew up in choir. Yeah. I did. I grew up in choir. Uh -huh. I literally spent like 18 years in choir, right? We, but I'll tell you wow. what, I have a choir voice. I do like solo voice. Uh, uh. like there's, it just doesn't work. I don't have that pop star voice, but I can be like, da, 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 right? And that's kind of what you do in choir. When you're a baritone, that's kind of what you do in choir. It's bum, 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 right? It's not, it's not very exciting. And you know what? I did it for the girls. Let me, let me just tell you. Let's just cut right to it. I mean, that's, just, that's usually why guys do most everything. We're not, we're not going to beat around the bush today, folks. We're not going to beat around the bush yeah. today. And speaking of yeah. beating around the bush, do we have an advertisement for the, the YouTube toolkit? Guys, you've got to check out the YouTube toolkit. Do we not have it? Is it not loaded up? All right. We, it's, this show is brought to you today by the YouTube toolkit. Go to youtubetoolkit.com and download it. Look, this is brand newly revised. It's made specifically for business owners, small business owners, service-based companies like yourself. If you want to know how YouTube works for the business owner, the scripting that you should use, the background you should have, you got to go download this guy, the YouTube toolkit. It's right here, right? I know that I know you're thinking to yourself, wow, that's an amazing graphic. And you'd be right. You would be right. This is like, this is, uh, this is one of my most favorite graphics. Um, it's not really, but it's up and you should go get the toolkit right now. Okay, let's get into our videos today. Guys, we're going to be talking about holiday video ads and how you can be making video ads for your company right now to start generating leads and generating sales. I want to give you guys uh, like some, some, some overview here because this is a really fantastic story, Nick. Some of you know I just launched a beta group and in that beta group, we've got something like 40, 45 business owners 
and we're learning how to make video that drives sales. And and I've got I'm getting this thing is like oh and I don't have a camera oh and I I need to know like how do I do this and oh and how do I do that and it's like how do, you don't need to do any of those things you need to take five snapshots of your picture put them together in a slideshow and then bump boost it on Facebook right you know what happens even with these fancy schmancy ads people will watch about 15 seconds of it before they click on the link right. And we're over here as business owners thinking that we got to have these really complex, really amazing videos when really all we need to do is show the product to the people and share with them how to buy it. We're not doing that. As business owners, we're doing a bunch of like 10 tips and 10 reasons why and, and I'm going to sell a home. Like how about just say what it is that you do and how they can buy from you. Now, there's a place for content videos, top 10 things and five reasons why. There's a place for that. Don't get me wrong, okay? I'm not him and Han, okay? But if you want to make sales- We're not going to have that here. I just want to go ahead and say that really quick. We're not going to have any him and Hawing there be none. going on here there today. Be none. There none. will be none, sir. There will be none. And I want you folks to be in a place right now where you're able to leave this episode and go make a video just like Keith Radke did over at, he owns a microblading salon in Salt Lake City, Utah. I had him put together five images that were based off this video I'm about to show you. And in that time he is in, and he boosted the post on Facebook. He spent like $7, has increased his web traffic 257% and set four appointments, four appointments with a very, very, very simple video. Okay, so let's show the first video, Nick. Let's play it for him. And then let's sort of just kind of like, we'll play it again and we'll sort of dissect it. Okay, now this is a video I saw. Uh, well, first, who wants to see the video? If you want to see the video, tell me. In the, I want to hear you say, yeah, yeah, in the comment section yeah, yeah. right now. See, exactly. Exactly. We're trying to get this energy popping, folks. Eight hours of sleep in four days, and we're we're revving to go. Okay, so this first video, I saw it on Instagram, and it immediately caught my attention, and I bought the product within like a minute. So within two minutes, nice. never seen the company before, uh, they made a sale. So Melissa, can we, uh, audio's a little messed up, guys. We had to rip it off of Instagram. Uh, can we go ahead and play that? <laughs> And it ends. And it just ends right there. All right, so let's talk about it. Uh, let's talk about it. First, I want to ask the audience, what was that an advertisement for? Tell me right now, what was that an advertisement for? I'd love to hear from you guys what you liked about the video, what you didn't like about the video. Nick, let me ask you first, what are your overall thoughts on that video in terms of production value, you know, wow appeal, and, and some of those things? It seemed like it was a very high production thing for sure um very cool interesting shots in there the music you know had like a nice tempo yeah. um going with it to where it just kind of had that like cool feel to it yeah um so on that side of things i think um i think that it you know it, it came across well yeah now did 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 you think that this is a video that costs a lot of money to produce um possibly you know like it, it did have kind of a professional feel to it for example even though it can be done um, cheap these days, uh, you know, they still had like the, the nice smooth gimbal shot, you know, going through the park or whatever that was, you know, and things like that. And when you do little details like that in terms of that stabilization, it definitely makes it feel like a like a, a higher uh, production cost. value thing. Production. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. OK, yeah. so some great points there, Nick. Um, uh, first of all, I wanted to give a big shout out to our good friend Evan Carmichael, who is logging in on YouTube saying hello spreading the love evan you do so you sp you spread so much cheer evan evan has like the heart of santa claus all year round 
He really, yeah. he really does. Evan Carmichael is the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, Alejandro Reyes is also logging in. Pff, good to see you, Alejandro. We'll be meeting with him after this call. And we're, we're pumped to do that. So Scott Ayers is asking, he's, he's, he's making a great point here. He says, was this an ad for MMA while skateboarding? <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, and, and I'll tell you, <clears throat> Uh, it's an interesting point because I, I felt like the production value of the video was not phenomenal. Like this wasn't this wasn't like let's get all hands on deck for this and and like what's the what's the writing session gonna be like and what special effects are we gonna use? It's really a collection of clips, probably shot with probably shot with yeah. See, we've got a collection of clips just kind of shot. Probably with the gimbal that they're advertising right here. Now, I want to I wanna point something out to you guys in this video, right? They, what they're doing is they're showing this gimbal in all of these different environments. And that's huge, right? They're showing the product as it relates to a whole bunch of different case uses. So we've got the, like the vlogger. We've got the skateboarder. We had the MMA or the sports, right? You want to advertise how it can go. We have before and after. And this is the part. Can you pause it right here, Melissa? This is the part right here that crushed me. We're actually, I'm like going through this a little bit too fast. Because I spent $300 on a gimbal that you cannot connect a microphone to, right? Because it, you have to plug the microphone directly into the phone and the gimbal itself blocks the phone from doing that. So right when I saw this part here, this is when I was like, I need this device, right? You understand? Does that make sense, Nick? Absolutely it does. Um, because basically to, to reframe that, you basically said, hey, I have this pain point. They highlighted a feature of theirs which solved that pain point and you're like, I'm in. That's yeah. all I needed to see. If yeah. you show me that in frame one, I would have bought it. This is huge, folks. And this is what a lot of you guys are not doing in your videos. Whether you're selling a product or you're selling a service, I don't, I'm not experiencing that service. Right? When you do your like top 10 reasons why a chiropractor will help you, I'm not actually seeing the value of the chiropractor, right? The, I'm not actually experiencing your business. I'm hearing you talk about some health topics that are that are cool, but what I what I need you to show me is what the process is like. So here are some clips you may want to get. If you have a service-based business, a retail business, you don't have a product to show off like this, right? What you want to do is show the process a customer experiences walking in and out of your store, right? So you want to get shots of a customer walking into your store, shaking your hands. You want to get a shot of you you and the customer sort of talking together in your doctor's outfit and you're blah, 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 blah. And, and then you want to show, you know, the adjustment, how gentle it is. You want to show the smile on the customer's face and then the happy customer walking out of your store, right? Those five, six things right there tell the story of your, of the experience of your product, the experience of your service, right? And when you do content videos, you're not showing them that. You're showing off your intellect, but you're not giving the customer the experience of doing business with you. They can't see themselves doing business with you, and they're going to do business with somebody who did reach them in that way. So you've got to show your product. You've got to show your service in action in these videos. Videos. Nick, any thoughts? Yeah, I think that's great. Like me personally, for disclosure, I'll add to those claps there for Owen dropping the mic, leaving the stage, dropping the mic on the way out. Um, but yeah, like for me personally, like I don't have any experience actually making that type of uh, content, you know, in terms of making um, uh, uh, videos for people for that sort of thing. So um, with this, like just listening to what you have to say, just like everybody in the audience right now is is a learning experience for me as well, because um, like I said, like, you know, in terms of the content that I make and that I've been involved with, um, specific ads um, are definitely not a uh, not a part of that. I mean, in terms of producing them, it's a different type of video, <clears throat> is it not? It's a different sure. type of video, right? Sure. Like with a content sure. video. Yeah, you're making a, a, a small feature film in a sense, right? You want that four to seven minutes to be really impactful and and uh, uh, and and energizing for the viewer with a video ad, you literally have 15 seconds to 30 seconds to get them to click, right? And you have got to show them what they want to see. Now, this did. Uh, Lily Tree is saying I really want Owen directing my video. I'm a fantastic director. Little bit 
I'm a little bit of a, you know, like a headlocker, like, like, you know, do what I say. I remember one time I was directing Melissa's over here. How dare you, Melissa? How dare you? Uh, Melissa's over here. She's going like, I agree. I remember I was doing a live stream once and Dan Courier is a mutual friend of ours was watching and he goes, he was watching me sort of direct my wife. And I was just like, you know, just like cut, you know, stop, cut, you know, do that again. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show, right? I'm doing all that stuff, and Dan Curier is like, oh, snap, Owen's all business. You know what I mean? So directing is it's huge because you want to have that, that big thing right. Can we go? I want to show you guys one more thing. Super, super important. Let's go back to that video. Just put it to the first frame. Okay, the first frame, the first 10 seconds of your video is key. That's when people are going to click. Now, you're going to get better clicks at the one-minute mark, okay? But you're going to get massive clicks. So at the very beginning, the, the boom, pause it. Right there, two seconds, like five clips, showing him pull out the thing from his pocket, add an adapter, and your eye goes, what is that? Right? Immediately, is this is speaking to who, a male or a female? What do you think, Nick? Definitely think, I definitely think male just because of the imagery that they've chosen to use. Yeah. And it's techy. Yeah. It's geary. That's not to say females yeah. aren't geary and techy, right? Because we've got friends in the tech well, space right. that are. But, but, but what they are doing though is they're tapping in, like with the MMA thing and all that stuff. Like they're they're tapping into male interests. You yes. know what I mean? Like in terms of in terms of you know, like I'm sure there's a lot more males interested in the MMA thing than yeah. there are females, for example. And, and I'm guessing that these people probably also have a version um, that is also um, catered towards females as well. Yeah, and they've got sections in there as well, but I think you can really see who they're marketing towards, right? They're really going towards, especially opening up with MMA, right? They're yeah. really going towards uh, a, a male audience, and I think that's that's another key point here, right? Because I we're it, we're in this beta course, and so much of the business owners are telling me things like, you know, well, we serve everybody, male, female, old and young. I can chiropractic anybody, right? I can clean anyone's teeth. I can do retirement plans for anybody, right? But at the end of the day your analytics will tell a very different story, right? If you look at where your best deals are coming from, you are going to find that they come from people in a certain income range. I don't know what that income range is. It depends on your product, your service, and the way you're selling it, right? But you're going to find that, huh, most of my people are, you know, making uh, 100 to 200,000 a year, right? Uh, most of them are married with kids, right? Most of the decision makers are female, right? The one who is actually corresponding. And so is female. So what you have to do is take into consideration what you know of your best selling customers. I love it. That was your great. best, right? Timing guys, we're getting it. Yeah. Uh, your best selling customers and make a video targeted for them. Now, what, what does that mean? It means the person, if you're targeting females, the person in your video could be female right? It means that the other people in the video could be female as well. Lots of females, lots of female oriented activities. We get a little into stereotypes here. I'm going to ask you guys to like put that political correctness aside right now and think about just the marketing side of it, right? The marketing side of it. You are telling females, hey, this is a product for me. Just as this ad is saying, hey, are you geary? Are you techie? Are you on the go? and you want a gimbal that you can connect your mic to and that you can charge, right? Because it charges. I loved that part of the video. They showed it to me all with zero words and a, a, an easy background beat you could download off of audio blocks, right? So I really like this video. This one sold me. Now, how much did that gimbal cost? That gimbal, that gimbal itself was a $30 gimbal and I bought the crap out of it. You know, I almost, I wanted to give them a stocking stuffers. I'm going to put that guys in the link section right now so you guys can check it out. The way that I saw it is like 30 bucks is like, I, I could lose 30 bucks on a crappy gimbal. You know what I mean? Because here's the deal. Yeah, that's a steal considering that the, like the DJI, um, uh, Osmo 2 or Mobile 2. Yeah, yeah, like that one is um, like 150 bucks, I believe. Yeah. So, you know, the, the comparison between the two, like if this one gets the job done, I mean, heck, man, 30 bucks and it has the additional mic input. Yeah. It's a pretty good deal. Who, and you know who makes it is uh, Zhiyun. Uh, oh, okay. okay. So, so Zhiyun, just for you guys know, they, they're neck and neck with DJI on the, they, they make sort of the less expensive gimbal, right, at the end of the day. But making this one available for like the masses... I think is is an is an awesome move, and I don't want to get too distracted on the product side of things, but sure. uh, think about your ads 
your videos in terms of the people that actually need it, not in terms of the people that you have to like go through all these objections with, right? Like I, like a lot of us, we make our videos for the, to try to convert the non-believers. What I want to encourage you to do is focus on the believers, the people that already love what you do. They're experiencing back pain. They need a retirement plan. Whatever the case is, focus on them and only them. Do not focus on convincing people uh, to get chiropractic if they are pharmaceutical types, right? That's not the market for chiropractic. Focus on your people, and that's exactly what this ad did. So let's review, okay, quick, some highlights of this ad. The first 10 seconds of your video need to target your audience. Your audience needs to say, oh, this is something I would watch, not something I would buy. That comes later, right? You want to have something that says, this is something I would watch. And it keeps you watching for 10, 15 more seconds. The next part of that is, guys, show people using your product, using your service, or experiencing the joy that comes from your service. If you are a service-based company, if you're a real estate agent, you're a financial broker, you're in these different niches, you're a consultant of some kind, you have got to get footage of you meeting with people, shaking hands, smiling, and talking. You should literally hire, right? A videographer, have your friend come and shoot video for the day, a couple, an hour or two, really. Sit down with two friends of yours and just fake a bunch of, you know, I'm talking to you and now you're talking to me and now we're shaking hands and now I'm listening and now, you know, we're walking through the house together go through that go through that sequence right and use those in your videos everywhere okay so that's video number one what do you guys think what do you guys think of that video i'd love to hear scale of one to ten you didn't like it you'd never buy from it or hey i didn't know videos could be so simple would love to hear from you guys on uh, on that and always great to have you dr and sten eckberg is out there great to see you dr sten and lily tree yeah and really quick i want to say lily tree um has um you know she said focus on the believers i love that you know highlighting um where you just said that and and i commented in there saying that that's a power tip and i think that that's a really powerful thing that um a lot of people overlook all the way across the board on everything is you know instead of trying to you know instead of trying to always reach out there and try to, you know, force people into, you know, into your, into your, you know, business ads or into, you know, your yeah. YouTube content or whatever it is that you're trying to do, just make content and, and ads and stuff like that and, and, and sell your business to the people that are already, that are already into it. That Huge. Makes, I mean, that's, that's, yeah, it's great, man. Huge. And you know what? Here's something else that, that this ad did really good. Uh, Melissa, we'll, before we move on to the next one, I want to show this last this last place. Can you pull up the – I just sent you, Melissa, the link to the, the website where you can actually buy the product. So so I made a video on Instagram, and if you guys aren't following me on Instagram, you got to be checking out my stories. I do a lot of great stuff over there. Go to Instagram. Go to Owen.video. Uh, no, excuse me, Owen Video on Instagram, and just check it out. So, so here's something that's key, right, is – packaging your service, right? Selling what you sell. Now, if we, can you go to, okay, if we go to the, to the, when you click on the video we just showed, it takes you to this page, okay? Uh, and there's so much that I love about this page, but a good video ad is, is supplemented by a good sales page, right? And this sales page is excellent. Lots of GIFs, lots of imagery, right? Stats. I've even got a timer on here, but Melissa, let's go up to the menu, if we go up to the menu, you'll see that this company sells a lot more stuff. However, in the video ad, right, they sell all of this kind of kooky wish.com stuff, right? But in the video ad, I didn't see a video that's like, hey, we sell this gimbal and tons of other things. It was all about the gimbal. And as you start marketing your product or your service, specifically your service, right? Dr. Sten, Gom, David Gom, stained glass is watching right now. You don't want to promote everything. You want to promote the one big thing you're trying to sell to that one demographic. So you don't want to do a video that's like, hey, we're a chiropractor. We'll crack anybody's back, right? You want to do something that's more like we help soccer moms with lower back pain. You understand what I'm saying? And that's what you're moving forward with, right? You guys, we get too, too befuddled in our videos. You're talking about too much stuff, right? You've got to take that main thing. If you do retirement plans for guys that are like 55 plus, that's what your ad has to sell. We do retirement plans for those of you getting close to retirement, right? Not, 
Are you a young entrepreneur? Are you an old guy? Are you a single mom? I can help you because I'm crazy Gideon, right? I'm crazy Eddie, you know? We got black cars, white cars, truck cars, expensive cars. Don't be that guy. One thing, one thing in your video, okay? And that's something to think about. Okay, thoughts on that, guys. Love, love having you here. I actually love shows like this where we're just kind of winging it. And just having fun yeah. and, and talking to folks out there. Hey, I want to know, what is your business? What does your business do? What's the main product you sell? Would love to hear from you in the comments section. Dan Carrier joining us. Christopher Fresh joining us. Uh, works at a very interesting service-based uh, organization. So I'm glad you're here, Christopher Fresh. Okay, let's go to the next video. This next video produced by a friend of ours, a guy named Travis Chambers, uh, Chamber Media, does excellent, excellent viral video work. Now, this next video that we're going to show you guys is a little bit more in depth. It's four minutes, so sit tight. You're going to see like a legitimate live video or a legitimate viral video. Let's talk about some of the statistics of this video. Now, this is on the higher end scale, right? This is going to be a high end produced video, but that doesn't mean you can't mimic it. You want to look at the conventions that they used in this video and there's six core elements that we're going to talk about. And this all comes from a post that Travis Chambers wrote on his LinkedIn page yesterday. In fact, we invited Travis to come on. Our schedules didn't work out. We were hoping to have him here today. Schedules didn't work out. But uh, just lots of love for Travis Chambers and what they're doing over at Chamber Media. This video we're going to show you, 24 million views, 37,000 shares. 37,000 mm, nice. shares. And 4 million in sales. 4 million. In sales, so obviously massive distribution. Um, Melissa, let's play the video and then uh, and then we'll talk about it. Why did I choose this bacteria-filled hellhole to talk to you? Because it may just be the perfect representation of your face. Acne, people. I'm talking about acne. And what's worse than acne? Adult acne, like that time you broke out the night before your job interview. And your zits were on the forefront of your mind, literally. You know, I'm really good with pimples. People, I'm good with people, not pimples. Obviously, I'm not good with pimples. That would be weird. Although I'm sure there's some pervy website for people who like them. Ew, I'm not one of those pimples. People, ah! Have a good one. Uh, Bye. Uh, no, chair, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. got it. Mm -hmm. okay. Bye. <laughs> Needless to say, you did not learn that job. And just when you thought it couldn't get worse, you nearly second degree murdered your boyfriend. Good morning, my beautiful. Hey, hey. <laughs> he survived. The relationship didn't. You tried everything. Yogurt, honey, guacamole mixtures, toothpaste, which, oddly enough, it's for your teeth. Salicylic acid, benzoyl peroxide, laser beams, and your own tears. You even tried affirmations. I have clear skin. I have clear skin. I have clearly gone insane, and I'm going to cry now and eat a lot of ice cream. Those solutions don't last. It's like playing whack as it. I try to spot you, but they just never die. Here, let me explain. Seriously, who are you though? This is good bacteria. This is bad bacteria. Okay. All acne products kill both. Now, why would you want to kill your good bacteria? It's essential for your immune system, and also, look at his abs. Nerd Skin Care arms your good bacteria with the natural materials it needs to eliminate your bad bacteria. Oh, hey. It's like a sauna in here. <laughs> but we don't have a celebrity. We've just got a nerd. Hey, Evelyn. Hi. This is Evelyn. She's the founder of Nerd Skin Care, a company that's changing the face of acne treatment. Like, literally, it's changing your face. <laughs> you get it? You can find out more here. And you can trust that Evelyn knows what she's talking about. She has a master's degree in biomedical engineering from Columbia University. And instead of hiring an actor wearing a rented white lab coat to tell you nerd skincare works, Evelyn's going to sacrifice her face in the name of science and wear this terribly unattractive camera headgear for nine days. Evelyn is going to literally put acne bacteria on her face because on day six, she's going to apply nerd skincare, which will arm her good acne fighting bacteria with zip missiles and pimple grenades, effectively killing the bad bacteria. She's also definitely not getting laid that week. Sorry, you're not getting late. That's, that's probably true. Evelyn, come on. And here we see Evelyn applying some potentially dangerous acne bacteria to her skin. Still looking perfectly clear, but not for long. Looks like we've got a nasty downpour of bad bacteria landing on the north northeast cheekbone region. Oh, God. I recommend Evelyn stays inside for the next couple days until that clears up. <laughs> Seriously, Evelyn, no one wants to see that. And looks like I just saw Evelyn on the toilet. Didn't need to see that either. Ooh. 
That's just unfortunate. But on the up and up, looks like we're gonna have clear skin in the next couple days as Evelyn applies Nerd Skin Care. And looks like I'm right. Day nine, perfectly clear skin, not a cluster in the skin. Look at that, cluster clear, cluster clear, cluster clear, cluster clear. <laughs> oh, back to you, myself in the spa. Nerd Skin Care works, and instead of aging your skin like most acne products, Nerd keeps your skin looking young. It has 27 active ingredients. You'd be lucky to pay 500 for three. The cleanser has no soap or foaming agent because those do nothing but irritate, kind of like my ex. Nerd products are gentle, extremely effective, and last a long time, not like my ex. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking about my ex, but real quick, Chad, if you're watching, just like, look at how well I'm doing with my life. <laughs> If you're over acne like I'm over Chad, <laughs> click here and get nerd skincare today. Boys, <coughs> come and get me. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Guys, guys, can somebody help me up? Guys, 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 guys. Guys, guys, are you guys seriously still fanning? Help me up! My freaking coccyx is... Okay, so super funny video. In fact, guys, it goes on for 25 more seconds of just her screaming while it gives the audience time to click on the link, right, and to, and to actually take action, plus increases the, the last few moments of watch time on the video, which is super important. Okay, six six key points, but first I want to hear from you guys in the audience. What stood out to you in that video? Nick, let's start with you. What 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 did you like? What did you you know, what are your thoughts on some of that video? What did you dislike? For me it was for me it was the humor. I enjoyed the humor part of it because you know, like in a lot of in a lot of uh ads like that or just in a lot of uh just yeah, in a lot of ads like that, they 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 try to make everything as serious as humanly possible yeah. in terms of, you know, oh, but it's going to do this and it's going to do this. The fact that they added so much humor in my opinion, uh definitely made it a more enjoyable experience. It kind of made it look like you're watching a comedy skit mixed with an ad at the same time, which is pretty cool. Yeah, cuz you're kind of waiting for the next joke, right? You're at this like in yeah. this you're like what are they going to do next? Um and super fun these little nuances, right? I love nuances. Movies like The Princess Bride, right? Where you go back and you 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 see something, you hear something the third time you watched it. And you missed it, you know, the first couple of times, right? You know, these little nuances. So, for example, I've seen this commercial before. I've never actually finished it. But seeing the, uh, like, when Travis falls out the window, I, th I think his name was Chad, right? Or when, when, when Travis falls yeah. out the window, it he's in, a, he's in a towel, and then it's, he falls out backwards, and it sort of blurs under the, the underside of the towel. I'd never seen that before. I didn't notice that before. But then seeing it right here, that, hilarious, hilarious to me. Right, that they would actually kind of tease the yeah. satchel a little bit on on on, yeah. on a video. Um, so I love that about it. And let's let's go into some of these six points. I want to hear from you guys. What are some of the things that you loved about it? Yeah, Jason? where Harley, what, what Harley says here is he says that um, uh, it was uh, a bit edgy, and I think that that also definitely added to it in terms of you know, like you're talking about the pixelation. You know, they're talking about you know the um, the the girl not getting laid and things like that. And I yeah. think that. Um, you know, adding that bit of edge also um, uh, makes the whole thing a lot more entertaining in terms of, you know, watching the watching it unfold. OK, great, great point, too, on targeting your demographic. Right. So yeah. do you think that the 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 older um, conservative leaning audience is going to appreciate a commercial that that blurs out, you know, uh, the the male anatomy that talks about getting laid, right? And that's really is talking about adult acne. I would say no. In fact, you are trying to repel that audience, right? You are saying, and this goes back to primal branding. How many of you guys have read primal branding? Okay, because primal branding talks about you. Not, not only do you need your tribe, you have to have your anti tribe. Right, you have to have your your people that says we are not like these people, right? So what this ad is saying is like, hey, if you're young, if you're hip, if you're cool, then this is for you. If you're stale and boring, like this, you're not even gonna like who we are as a company, right? And I think that Purple does this a lot with their ads too. They're very similar style ads, the mattress company, right? It's, it's goofy, yeah. it's silly. 
right? So I love, I love, I love watching these things. So that first part, that key element, yes, number one, guys, is why did this video do so well? Is it entertains? It entertains while selling, keeping people watching for a very long time, which increases consideration. Think about that term, increases consideration. The longer you're watching it, the more you're allowing your mind to go, huh, hmm, maybe I need that. And that gives the that gives uh, the, uh, the the producers time to sell you on uh, on on the product. So it entertains uh, while it educates. Now, Nick, any thoughts? How how? Because I find you to be very entertaining. What are some tactics that you would recommend to be entertaining in your videos while you're selling? Man, that's a that's a great question, Owen. And in terms of uh, being entertaining in the videos, if you have a sense of humor, leaning on that sense of humor is is something that you definitely want to do. Um, depending on who it is you're trying to target, of course. Yeah. Um, outside of that, being entertaining, I mean, just in my opinion, just going for it in terms of um, just getting like not being afraid of the camera and just yeah. doing your thing is yeah. is definitely the win. Um, in addition to that, you know, planning it out is also going to make a difference because if you just wing something like that, you know, you're obviously going to have a little bit more of a difficult time with it. But, it, you know, if you're putting an ad together, you're going to have to plan that out in some form or fashion for the sake of, you know, getting the results that you want out of it. But um, me personally, if I was going to do something like that, what I would do is I would build that framework. And then I would bring myself to that framework. So yeah, I, I think you nailed it. You know, so many times when people hear the word entertaining, they think about a jokester or telling jokes. And that's not necessarily what we're talking about, although there's a place for it, right? I did, um, uh, in sure. fact, I was just talking to Jay Bear this morning, social media guy, uh, really, uh, really crazy, uh, cool guy. And in fact, I think he has a jacket like this. I, I want a blazer sponsor now, Jay. But, you know, he was talking about... Um, uh, uh, well, we were talking about, you know, videos, being yourself in videos. So, like, with I, I did this series with Jay, right? I got all distracted. I said Jay Bear's name, and I got all distracted by myself. Uh, I, he was. We were talking about doing video serieses, right? And I did a video series where I opened up the very beginning with a joke. So I would say, you know, welcome to Owen Video, uh, where, you, you know, where the content is tighter than MC Hammer's pants or something like that. It was like, you know, but every 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 video would open up with this little joke. Now that works for me, right? Because I wrote the joke and spent time and I animated it and those videos did very well, right? But you don't have- Once you're a fun personality. Right. That, that also makes that difference. Like if, you're, if you were a stale person, it wouldn't have fit. Right. Because it doesn't, it's not a natural. And then it seems you know, contrived. Thing within your person. Yeah, and it right. seems sort of right. contrived and people, they, they feel this inconsistency. So being entertaining is not about being a jokester, it's about adding yourself into the video and doing this video where you're, uh, you, you know, you are being yourself. You have to think about the camera like, like it's a, your, your favorite client, you know, and if you would slip in a little, a little, you know, a little under the table joke or a little innuendo, right? Do that in your video. If you're, if you're going to do that in real life, people get a chance to see who you are. So entertain, entertain while you're selling. Uh, number two reason this video did so well, for every every $1 in ad spend drove $4 in sales, which is incredible, nice. which is incredible. So ad spend behind it became limitless because now the it's called scalable, right? So with every $1 you're making four, now the advertising's unlimited. You, you just, it fuels itself, right? So this took the company from $20,000 to 4 million in sales in six months. So, wow. a good video ad drives sales. Folks, I said it with the last video. You have to have a good sales page to back up your video. And this is what I teach in my beta course. And I feel like this is something that not, it's not being talked about a lot too much. We talk about good videos and calls to action and video structure. But once they click on that ad, they're gonna go somewhere. Where are they gonna go? and is where they're going conducive to conversion, right? These are things we have to think about. Do you have a call to action button? Do you have a discounted price? Do you have an email list? Now, uh, we're going to be doing, we're going to be teaching a lot more of this, folks. So stay tuned to the Business of Video podcast. And remember that if you want your viewer to do something after they watch your video, they have to go to a good, a good page after they visit it. 
Uh, so let's talk about tip number three now. Tip number three is it's a great product, right? You got to have a great product. First of all, Andrew can in the house. Air 5. Poof, Andrew yeah. can. Whoop, whoop. If I can, you can too, buddy. Got to hang out with Andrew at the Two Buddy headquarters last week doing some fun stuff. We're going to be putting together a live workshop with Two Buddy in San Diego, folks. It's going to be a lot of fun, Andrew. Glad you're here. Uh, you got to have a great product. Nick, is having a great product uh, important to making sales? Well, it's everything. Because if you don't have a great product and you still make sales on it, then you're going to get all types of like refunds. You're going to get all types of complaints. You're going to be smeared all over the internet, and it's not going to be. It's you're not going to be in business for very long. Huge. So if, you come with a, if you come with a, yeah, if you come with a, if you come with a great product, then you you have people out there advocating on your behalf. People that are that are you know getting your product are happy people. They're telling their their you know friends about it and so on. So yeah, yeah. having a great product is is everything. It will it will die on the vine. Eileen Smith logging in. Great to see you. Folks, tag your favorite business owner. Tag your favorite local business person, especially someone who's not active on on Facebook, right? They're not they're not likely to see this show, right? Tag them and have them watch this section because it's so it's so vital. You have to have a great product. Now, I was raised in in the school of sales, right? I've been a salesperson since a very, very young, maybe about 16 years old. I started like studying sales. Um, there, I, I come from the school of sales where it doesn't matter if your product's good, only if you're a good salesman, right? So I grew up on selling crappy products to people and making them feel happy about it, right? When you get into your 20s, it starts to really weigh down on your soul. You know what I mean? Like, what kind of person am I becoming? Um, I found that when you're selling a crappy product, it's not only going to weigh you down, it's you're not going to get that 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 additional referral boost, right? You're not going to get that share boost that you need to get from product sales, from somebody using the product and actually experiencing with it. So you've got to have a great product. And it just hurts your rep and it just hurts your reputation in general. Yeah. Right? It All just hurts your reputation in general because it's like, hey, there's that bad product person. Yeah. Yeah. Again. Right. Again. And you'll always be right. Hey, it says 20 years to build a career, 20 minutes to ruin it. Right. You've got to make sure that your product is good. Now, we're not talking about a perfect product, folks. You're not perfect and I'm not perfect, so we can't expect a perfect product, but you can do your right. best to deliver that product. And let me tell you something. I get this a lot, Nick. I get this a lot is like these leads will we'll work with these clients and we'll get leads from a video ad. And they'll, oh, this, he didn't buy. That was a crappy, oh, that's a crappy lead, right? Here's the thing. When you're doing video ads, and you're running ads on Facebook and YouTube and you're driving leads, you have to treat every single one of those leads like it's the last lead you're ever going to get and coddle them and nurture them to get that momentum going, right? There are I say this, right? There's no such thing as bad leads, only bad salespeople, right? At the end of the day, you get a lead who's not ready yet. You know, you let them know, I'm not, I don't think we're ready yet, but let me show you what else we can do for you. Right, was talking to a recruiter yesterday. Actually, came on board, bought a fifteen thousand dollar funnel from us. Right, woohoo! I love it. Woo! Uh, same type of thing. Same type of thing. It's like it's you've got to get those customers. He, he'll go into a sales call, and if they don't want his service, his main service, he's got these ancillary services that he he then moves to. It's a great it's it's a great a way to approach the sales process, guys. So think about your product, and remember, your product is not chiropractic or 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 retirement savings. It's it's Soccer mom's back pain, right? That's where your, your, your product has to be really specific. So that's number three. Number four is the video shows problems and solutions. Now, this, this goes back to what we talked about in the last video is you, you have to show people experiencing the product. So this time lapse on her face, I'll admit to, to that's the, it was the grossest part for me. Like I, I, for, for me, I don't do the greasy face well. Like it's, you know, for me, but pretty effective in telling the story, right? Because they actually showed the grease. Like that to me is so disgusting, right? Yeah. But then they show the, the after case and, and you literally, you legitimately see better skin. So you guys have got to find ways to show before and afters. You have got to put your customer in the after state as quickly or as, and as often as possible, uh, in your videos. Uh, Nick, any thoughts on that? Yeah, totally agree. I mean, I think that um, showing people like what they will get that that basically like how they're going to transform 
in some way, yes, shape, yes. or form through what it is that you are, uh, what it is that you're providing. Yeah. Be it you're going to help them relieve pain, oh. be it you're going to help them solve a particular problem, be it you're going to help them whatever. That that transformation that they're going to have is um, is the thing to focus. Transformation on. is the word. And by the way, Dana Garrison, big air five in the house. to you. Uh, we love Dana Garrison, don't we? We do. She's like one of the OGs. Yeah, good to see you, Dana, and I hope to see you every single week. Remember, guys, you can type five in the comment section right now. That will subscribe you to the show. You'll get an alert every time we go live. And let me tell you, 2019, we've got some big stuff planned for this show. You're going to see the best live show on Facebook right here on this channel. Now, the, the sa is I'm actually telling my clients the same thing, right? Because we do shows for some pretty big clients, right? And where I'm, I'm, gonna actually, it's, it's, I'm in competition with myself to make my show the best, but then their show is the best. And it's like this, it's like this, 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 it's like playing tic-tac-toe with yourself, you know what I mean? But transformation well, is the thing. Always win. That's, at the end of the day, you're winning, so that's all that matters, right? That's how, that's. That's how we do. That's yep. how we do. You yep. know, uh, uh, that transformation is huge, folks. I call it the after state, but it really is transformation. When we sell in our sales presentations, we do not begin until we have really clarified the muck you're in now. Look, you're not getting leads. You're not getting sales. Uh, everything is slow. You're never going to build your dream at this rate. Would you agree? Right? And we, you wait for them to agree that, yes, I'm so stuck right now and I'm like Artex in the swamp of sadness and nothing can pull me out, right? Um, you get them in that before state and now you can move them to the after state. Well, hey, sir, I'm so glad that you recognize the crappy position you're in right now because after 30 days with my product, you're going to look better, feel better, run faster, jump higher, and all the women will love you. Would you like to show me? Would you like me to show you how? right? You bring them to the after state, that transformation, right? If you are not promoting transformation, right? Is Angela almost watching right now? Angela, I'm talking to you, right? You have got to be promoting transformation, right? Hey, you're going through a split up with your husband. You're, you're, I'm so, I'm so sorry. I'm so, I, I bet you, you want to sell this house as fast as possible and get this behind you. Look, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to involve you very little, only as much as I need to. And what I'm going to do is I want to put you in a position to, to deal with your life while I handle all of your real estate needs, right? I will be at your side. Any questions you ever need answered, I'll be here for you. We'll get this house sold. We'll get you to a new house and we'll move on with your life. What do you think? Right? It's not, I can sold. serve all your, I'm, I'm buying this house right now. Oh, and I'm getting See? it right now. That was See? great. Yeah. Sign. Whatever you got, I'm, I'm yeah. Yep. I'll send right. you a DocuSign. I'll send you a DocuSign later. I just did a rant about how we need to use DocuSign more. Uh, big stuff, yeah. folks. Big stuff uh, here. You've got to be promoting transformation. Uh, number five, the spokeswoman, Laura Cleary, is compelling, quick, and engaging. Professional actress, obviously very funny, professionally written script, but on-screen charisma matters. Would you agree, Nick? It always matters. Yeah. It matters with anything because like, you know, that charisma, just like in real life, you know, like it, when you, when you're having a conversation with somebody that is, um, that doesn't, that's like zero charisma, it's kind of like, okay, well, uh, okay, well, Hey, you know, that's great conversation, but you know, I've got some other stuff to do, but when you're having a conversation with somebody that has charisma, yeah. then you just can't get enough. Yeah. You know what I mean? You just want to stand there and talk to them all day long. So, uh, so yeah, charisma definitely matters. With oh my question. gosh, huge, you know, huge. And I, I, I was born with a certain amount of charisma. I was born with a certain zeal for life. There's no doubt about that. But after cancer, uh, and after being forced to sort of shut down for a year, you know what I mean? And really run at half speed and, and okay, I'm going to brag here. Seeing what I could accomplish at half speed compared to what a lot of other people do at full speed. I was like, dude, I could really be a leader in this world. Right. Yeah. Um, that added to my charisma and all of a sudden my charisma grew three sizes that day. Um, but here's what I did. It wasn't like I just started being louder. A lot of times you say, oh, you need to be entertaining. And so like my kids, when I tell them to get entertaining, they get loud and they start using bathroom words. Right. That's that's and that's adults are the same way. It's like, oh, be entertaining. It's like, rah, rah, rah. I'm in your face. Right. Uh, 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 guys, you got to go get the book. Uh, the Wizard of Ads, David Maradiaga. It's about time, brother. Where you been? Where you been? I'm coming to your house and transforming your computer to log into the show every week. Uh, you have got to be in a place 
okay, where uh, you are engaging in a way that's realistic for you, right? Like Wizard of Ads, he talks about the the unsophisticated. The un, he's an ads guy, the Wizard of Ads, and this book is like a like his journal entries. It's literally the emails he wrote to his clients when they would either do very well or struggle with their advertising, right? So it's it's a, an amazing book, uh, and and he talks about. He talks about this type of, of energy, right? You've got to have a, a great charisma that's natural. The unsophisticated will use loud noises and, and bangs and whoops. Do you have to go? We'll use loud noises and bangs and whoops, right? Whereas we will do things like having the right demographic in the commercial. We'll show close-ups of the product. We'll use uh, uh, lights and sound where we need to, but not overdoing it, right? We don't want to be banging on trash cans here to get attention. You want to be using more sophisticated methods. Okay, and finally, and I heard this, guys, from you. I heard this from you guys in the comment section. The video is relatable. The video is relatable. And I heard Anna D'Onofrio say that as well. What is, what is relatable, yeah, what does relatable um, uh, mean to you, Nick? Well, I think that relatable comes down to knowing, you know, kind of taking us all the way back to, I think it was number one, just knowing who it is that you're making the video for. Because if you know who it is, and the, and the same thing applies to, you know, YouTube content creators, you know, in the videos that they put out um, that, you know, that aren't even related to ads is, if you know who it is that you're making your content for, you can literally design everything in that content to speak to that specific demographic of people Huge. that you're trying to reach. And that Huge. comes down to, you know, what you're like, what the imagery looks like in your video. Yeah. It comes down to the language that you're using in your video. In this particular case, you know, because we're referencing that ad, you know, it comes down to the humor that they're using and things like that. So that people, that person that they're trying to reach is going to, is going to see that. And, it's going to feel like home is kind of like a weird way to say it, but good. It, it's going to be something to where they're going to be comfortable with right out of the gate because it's custom tailored to the interest that they have and the things that they're into. Uh, big, big stuff there. And you know what you guys can do? You guys have got to use Google. In fact, in our company, right, um, we have we have sort of a Google first uh, a Google first um, mentality, right? So uh, with me right here, it's easy for Jason, Melissa, or Teresa to like ask me like, oh, and what's, you know, how do we do this? Or how do we do that? And it's like, you have to Google it. You have to Google it first. Because yeah, I could probably answer it, but I'm doing something, right? Like you've got to learn how to, to, to Google that. And here's why I'm saying that. Because you can be Googling things like buzzwords for millennials, right? Great advertising words, for baby boomers google some of these things right like what are the best buzzwords to use in my video google it right as opposed to going I'm, now i'm not saying like you've got my group nick's group uh brian g johnson's group right daryl's group a lot of us are in and if you're not in these groups go to the uh, description i'll put the link to my masterminds group in the description box so you guys can join us over there we have a lot of great conversations there but you post something there and then you get sort of other people's feedback whereas when you google something you can get the result right now and you can start you don't have to wait for for me to respond or for someone else to respond eddie garrison to jump in you know he's always got something intelligent to say uh, guys, use Google. Go to Google first and find out like how to make my videos relatable. What makes a video relatable? Best words to use to make my video relatable. And start using some of those words in your videos. Make your videos more relatable. Be more human. And I think you'll see uh, a lot of success. So wrapping up here, guys. Wrapping up. How did this video get 24 million views, 37,000 shares, and 4 million in sales? Number one, it entertains. Number two, ad spend ad spend okay it was not let's just put this on the web and share it with our friends they boosted it okay you got to boost video three great product four problems and solutions feature testimonials feature before and after pictures uh engaging personality the video is relatable guys go use that in your own marketing i want to see you making short snappy easy videos and boosting them to your audience and when you do i want you to tag me in it because i'd love to give you some feedback thanks for joining us today uh and i'm, I'm pumped to hear uh hear more from you nick any big plans for the week Mine is just to keep on doing my thing, man. I've got a I've got a course that I'm working on right now with uh, TubeBuddy. Yeah, so I'm trying to get all of the stuff wrapped up for that, um, so that um, anybody watching this right now, go ahead and just go ahead and start putting a little bit of money aside because it's going to be awesome. But I'm um, trying to get all that stuff wrapped up so that we can launch it at the beginning of the year. 
I love it. Uh, we're doing some workshops with Two Buddy. We're really doubling down on showing people how to actually get results. You know, we've been talking a lot about, oh, do this, but we actually want to sit down with them and make sure that they're doing it correctly. So we're going to be doing that in San Diego, Orange County, perhaps Temecula. Very, very excited about that. What are you planning? for 2018 we've got like two three more weeks folks before it's over and you 2019 2019 guys you should not be snoozing right i got a, i got a uh, an instagram message from jace bennett you know jace right uh, uh oh i don't know if i do uh, we, we had breakfast with him at at at, uh, at vidcon amazing oh, yeah, amazing yeah, guy right he's yeah. got like 42 kids uh, the Ohana yeah. Adventure, 4 million subs. Amazing, yeah, yeah. amazing guy, right? He writes me yesterday, and he's like, dude, we are closing out 2018 hard. Here's a guy that I, I would say is a rich guy. Like, he's already rich. And his whole thing is, yeah, there's three weeks left. Let's crush it. And I, I tell you, I gravitate towards that, right? I'm not even ready for 2019, right? I'm I'm still focused on, we got to close the door on 2018. We hit a major goal yesterday and can't wait to keep moving forward. So I want to hear, how are you going to close out the year hard? Let us know in the comment section. And jo don't forget to join us next week for the last episode of the Business of Video Podcast 2018. Nick and I have a very special treat for you. So come on down. We'll see you next week. Type five in the comment section to subscribe. We'll see you guys then. Talk to you soon. Bye, guys.